So we've seen how animals mostly restrict their kindness to their closest kin, with a few possible exceptions like those capuchin monkeys that have an innate sense of fairness. But what about our own species? Because we're capable of cooperating with individuals far outside our own immediate family. Of course we have family values. Of course we do the most for our closest kin. But we also engage as a society in an institutionalized form of reciprocity. That's what money is. You get an exchange for future activities. But we're also kinder in a fundamental way than a lot of these simple biologic models would ever predict. Some people really are heroic. And some of them are people you've seen in the movies or on, in, in music. Garth Brooks, for example, raced inside a burning house to rescue two boys who were home alone. Vin Diesel, action hero, really in real life pulled a family out of a burning car on an LA freeway. Arnold Schwarzenegger once swam out to help a drowning man onto a boogie board and pushed him to shore. Kate Winslet saved a 90-year-old woman from a house fire caused by a lightning strike. I mean, these not close relatives, these are real cases of altruism. It is innate, it seems, because it is such a widespread human behavior to respond to a crisis in others. We saw it at the World Trade Center after 9-11, where the firemen, the policemen, were so heroic in trying to rescue people. It seems to run very, very deep in our nature. We see it not just in the U.S., but all over the world. After earthquakes in Mexico City, in Turkey, Iran, Taiwan, People go out of their way to help people, to rescue them. It's so deep within our psyches to do so. Even to the point that in Hurricane Katrina back in 2005 in New Orleans, which was the biggest hurricane disaster we've had in North America, there were many images of people who were stranded, who were really suffering and had a horrible few weeks of it after the hurricane struck. And the fact that the rest of their nation did not mount an effective response felt like a national disgrace. It's so deep that we feel the need to help each other, not even our closest kind, but anybody. This is something that runs even into our youngest children. Just like that capuchin monkey, we can see in small children an expectation of fairness. This is a study where children were shown images on a computer screen and they're 15 months old, so they can't talk yet. They can barely sort of do anything, but they're very sensitive and very acutely aware of what goes on in their social surroundings. They're shown movies that hide the distribution of cookies, so these are the treats that they're gonna see being distributed. And so what they're seeing is first an image of a woman who is about to distribute cookies to two other women, but the child is not allowed to see how this is actually distributed. All the child can see is, that, oh, that woman must be giving cookies to these other two women, and then the task is over, okay? So then the, what happens depends on how the cookies are distributed to these two recipients. And so if the child sees that one, for some reason, got three cookies, whereas the other only got one, that's we would say, is an unfair distribution. And this is fair, two and two. So the child is shown a slide with either an unfair or an unequal outcome or a fair outcome. And they stare longer at the unfair outcome. I mean, this is the way the world is supposed to work. Everything is fair. So it's like, yeah, okay, that's right. But they stare a long time. Oh, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. And it's interesting because they only do that when there are people involved. If you do the same experiment, but you remove the images of these two women, so all they see is somebody putting p cookies on a plate, they don't care. There's nothing more interesting about three versus one than there is two against two. So the kids have an innate sense of fairness as it happens to affect other people within their society. We have a deep sense of fairness. So human kindness is in our nature. And it's what truly distinguishes us from the animals. Part of it may be our higher levels of cognition, but I suspect there's something else. And this is a topic we'll look at again in much greater detail later in the course.